Good morning, or uh, it's morning here for me, uh, Wednesday morning, rainy Wednesday morning, uh, but it'll be evening, uh, I believe, when you guys will be seeing the video. So God bless you, and thank you for spending time, and uh, just to share in the Word of God. Last time we spoke of the gifts of the Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and He is very, very important in our lives. Uh, the believer is to seek and desire these things was the teaching from Paul. Today we'd like to elaborate a bit more on uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, mostly concerning the gift of tongues. It is something that's uh, been around uh, since the early church, of course. It is something that is considered controversial. And some people feel that, oh, that is something that is archaic, it was meant for the early church and is no longer necessary. Uh, some people feel that uh, if you don't speak in tongues, you do not have the Holy Spirit. Our pastor alluded to that this past uh, week in his teachings on Sunday morning. Um, and just that those, not that we believe that, but that that notion is out there. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that's important. It's in the scriptures. And if you could open your Bibles up to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And to me, Paul makes things quite clear about speaking in tongues, about prophecy, about the order of the church service. So I want to uh, take a look at that and, and see, see what Paul has to say. Now we know that in most of Paul's writing. He is reacting to some feedback that he has gotten from that particular church. He's hearing things about what's going on there, and he's responding, giving them some godly instruction concerning those matters. So apparently, in the church at Corinth, during their times of worship, it seemed to be quite disorderly. People speaking in tongues, people speaking out of line, and uh, Paul needs to correct us. We're going to read some of these things that he says. It's interesting, though, that this chapter is right after, and I know sometimes the order isn't quite uh, the way the numbers say, but uh, it, it comes after the love chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And uh, love being the chiefest among all, and love being very other centered thinking of our brothers and sisters before ourselves even in the order of the church even in the order of gathering in the church that is important and that is why this issue of tongues and prophecy is coming up in the first place and how to address this um, concerning what is best for the body of christ and that is paul's chief concern there so let's read a little bit here We'll go first and uh, again, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I'm going to start in verse 1. <clears throat> and Paul says, he says, pursue love. That's a strong word. Uh, you go for it with everything. And desire spiritual gifts. So love is the, the greater. That has to be pursued, but we want to desire these gifts of the Spirit. But especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues. But even more that you prophesied for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So Paul is explaining that the tongues are fine. He wishes that we all spoke in tongues. However, when you do that, it is very personal. Uh, no one knows what you're saying. You may not even understand what you're saying. It is a relationship directly to God. But when we prophesy in the order of love, which is something that we want to desire edif to edify those around us, the prophecy is something that the entire church benefits from, not just you, the individual. 
So he is saying, you want to speak in tongues? Great, I wish you would. But I really rather you prophesy. Hear from God what he's saying and give that word to the church or the brothers and sisters in particular. And that will edify the church body. Um, so it is, he is saying that it is more important to prophesy. Uh, in verses 6 through 12, he just makes some comparisons. You know, well, if he just had music and it just played different notes without a melody, it's not going to be beneficial. If I spoke a language that no one understood, it doesn't benefit any around anyone around us. And that's kind of the way tongues are. But when you have that prophecy, it's going to benefit the whole church. So there's a, a, a benefit there and uh, uh, an advantage. I'm going to skip down to verse 13. And he says, Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, that is seems very consistent. I've been saved a long time. I've been speaking in tongues a long time. And before I even understood what the word said about it, I spoke in tongues before that. And I would say that is very consistent. There were times, and speaking in tongues isn't something I do all the time. It's something that, that seems to, uh, I'll do once in a while. But at those times, there seems to be a deeper yearning within me that I don't quite understand. I'm out of words to say to the Lord, and the Spirit will take over in that, in that manner. Now, for me personally, if I do that, I keep it to myself. If it's in the church service, um, I do it quietly. Uh, and, and I've always felt that, and it's, it is consistent with the, with the teachings of the Scripture. But, but there is there's that, that yearning that the Spirit of God within us cries out on our behalf. So it's something that is good. It's something to be desired, but not like prophecy. And for... Um, if it comes out loud and it's disorderly in the church service, that's not good either. And Paul does touch on that in the chapter here. Um, let me just for time's sake, I'm going to have to skip down uh, to verse uh, 28. Uh, verse 28, it says, But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak to himself and unto God. So in other words, unless your prophets are, are speaking in tongues and there's an interpretation, which often there is not, uh, you do that quietly in the church. It's fine, it's relevant, it's for today, but in those cases it should be quiet. Um, and he even goes on in just in the general order of the church. Uh, he says, even if you're prophesying, if there's a few people that want to prophesy, it's got to be done orderly. Let someone who has that, who is hearing something, let them, let them speak out. But there's an order here. Because if, if, it's, if it's haphazard during a church service, no one's edified. No one comes out hearing from the Lord. Uh, so he, he wants there to be an order. Um, interestingly, this is where he even mentions about the women. Now that's a verse 30, 34. That the women are to be silent in the church. But again, and, and that has been, you know, taken as, oh, well, women can't speak and they shouldn't be teaching and they can't be pastors, all these different things. Uh, but in, in this context, the understanding is there. There's disorder in the church service. People are speaking in tongues. People are prophesying. It's out of line. It's disorder. People are coming away confused. And the women are asking the men what, what's going on here. They're asking questions. And Paul's saying, keep it down. When you get home, you can ask your husbands if you need some clarification. So again, the context is so important. Um, in verse 39, he wraps it up. He just he says, Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy and do not forbid to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. Amen. So that's the overall picture that our time of worship uh, we want to hear from the Lord. We want to speak with and utter with gifts he's given to us, but it needs to be done in order. So speaking in tongues is very much a real thing. Prophecy is very much a real thing and even much more desirable because it is consistent with love and edifying and blessing those around us. 
uh, God bless you guys. I hope that shed some light on, on, that, uh, on that issue. Uh, God bless you. So long.